Yo, yo, yo. What yo. is going on, guys? Welcome to the Real Dallason podcast. I got my boy Ethan here with yes, God Sent. Yes, I got a shirt just now. I'm, yes, I'm down to rep the game. Yes, sir. <laughs> Brand here. Um, yeah, so Ethan owns a, a brand called God Sent, as you know. I'll probably link the shop for you guys at the end of this video. Uh, somewhere in there, we'll put it in the description. But um, thank you for having me out, man. I appreciate really appreciate you. you. Thank, thank you so much, man. Thank you for having me. Absolutely, wow. dude. Like, I had to. As soon as I knew, as soon as I like saw his Instagram, I was like, oh, bro, like we got to do something. <laughs> when I saw appreciate the branding, I was like, we got to do it. Yeah, I appreciate um, you, man. Yeah, That's absolutely. Love, bro. That's much love. <laughs> Oh my god! <laughs> We're having a good time over here. <laughs> Some of that, that water. My bad, no. But no. Um, hell yeah. So basically, um, Ethan's from Virginia. Mm -hmm. So what brought you out from Virginia to Dallas? Like, what made you think Dallas is the spot yeah. to put the brand? Um, I came out here and visited in 2021, like January, February 2021, with. Um, my roommate, who I live with now, is also my good friend for a good like ten plus years, okay. and I saw the potential that was out here when I came and saw it myself, um, just to expand, yeah. just to grow. Um, they say something like you never really live a full life until like you leave your hometown and like where you grew up. That's true. There's so much love for Virginia. I love where I'm from, Northern Virginia. They helped me. Put the city on the game. Yeah. Put the city for the yeah, people. Yeah, right. <laughs> but I have to, you have to leave to hopefully bring something back. So the goal is to, not that I don't like anyone there or anything, but it's to leave, come back to bring value to the people who are there. Absolutely. And show them that it's possible in, in Dallas or LA or yeah. Minnesota, wherever you want to go. You expand. You just got to expand. Thing. Yeah. That's the goal. I feel like uh, in my own personal story, I went from, like North Dallas, and you know, I, I would always sit in my backyard just dreaming of like, yeah. I mean, I mean, I used to do music industry stuff, so I was like thinking yeah. about like how can I go and like you know do DJing somewhere. Yeah, 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 of course. And like I took a ballsy ass move. Yeah. And I went to Houston and wow. I tried to pursue some DJing over there. Uh -huh. Didn't work out. Terrible. Um, but you learn. You learn exactly. like, who you can trust. I was like, just thinking <laughs> in my mind, like even say if it doesn't work out, I learn. And that's what that is working out because I learned. Yeah, so exactly. I think it's how you look at it. You can either look at it half empty or half full, but it's beautiful regardless. Absolutely. The whole um, journey is beautiful. No, I feel that. I feel that wholeheartedly. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, in general, um, you know, now that I'm back in Dallas, it's weird because, like, you go out and when you're from your original city, it's great. Yeah. And it feels good to, to be gone from there. But when yeah. you come back, like it almost gives you like such a, I mean, if you ever go back yeah. to Virginia, yeah, yeah, yeah. No, go I back to your you. town, yeah. you're gonna be like, whoa. Yeah. Like, you're, I started here. This is yeah. like, this is all that energy that was yeah. curating from like the moment that you're like, I had a vision for yeah. something and you press forward and you come back and it just feels like, wow. you feel on top of the world, you know? Yeah. And I, I get now why people like rep their city yeah, in general. of course. Like, I think you have to rep your city where you're from. Yeah. Even if you you're from there. Yes. You're, yeah. You, nothing can change the fact that you're from Dallas, not from Northern Virginia. So we just have to embrace it. Yeah. yeah. And love it. So I think that's just one key point. Yeah. Some people will be like, Nah, I'm <laughs> playing there. I'm like, I'm playing there. No, I'm playing there. I'm playing here. Like, where you're from, you're from there. So I was named after the Cowboys, uh, and I still rep the Cowboys. What's exactly, up? <laughs> exactly. Exactly. It doesn't matter. Like. Through good and through bad, you have to love it. Oh my gosh. So, um, did you go to college up there? Like, what was your story behind, like, you know, obviously when you're raised there, you usually grow up in a house, or, yeah. like, who did you grow up with? Who's your who's your closest family members? Mm -hmm. Like, um, who supported you? Did you go to college? Like, did yeah. you figure this out, or did you just have a dream that you were so, like, screw that, I'm, yeah. I'm, I'm just chasing the dream? I feel like God said it's very different in a way, because the catalyst and the start of it was actually from a bad accident. Oh, okay. So yeah. I felt three stories out of my townhouse window. Oh. So I'm really not supposed to be talking to you. I'm really not supposed to be doing this. I'm not supposed to be here. Yeah. So the fact that I'm here is just so much joy. Yeah. It's so much love and it's just so much gratitude. Um, I know that's very short, brief. I feel thing like, of it, yeah. but um, was that like a traumatic? Yeah. I mean, it was definitely. It was traumatic turned into like purpose. I feel. So like. it was like pain turned into purpose. I'm here, I'm inspiring others. Um, and that's just like the whole message of God sent is just 
it's inspired by something that happened in real life mm -hmm. to become better day to day. Yeah. Whether that's you're playing basketball, you're playing football, you're doing a podcast, exactly. you're, you're cutting hair. Just be good in what you do. Yeah. You'll rep it and love it. Absolutely. So like, yeah. No, I feel that. I feel that wholeheartedly. So did you? So did you go to college out there, or mm -hmm. did you just skip so, that? Or so pretty what, much. Obviously, it happened yeah, accident, but like, did you learn? Yeah. How to like, do business or anything like that? I, I thank my mom a lot and my parents, okay. especially my mom, because she. I feel like I get a lot of my entrepreneurial genes from her. Yeah. Shout <laughs> Let's go. Mom. Shout out mom. Oh, I, shout out mom. I gotta thank out my mom too. My mom is a real one. <laughs> She's the one who's got me. You know. She she lifted me up and yeah. did everything that she could to give me yeah. what I have and I'm forever yeah. grateful for that and like, shout out to all the moms. So <laughs> shout out to moms, man. Shout out to moms of the night. She gave me a lot of um, confidence, you know, to make the moves I've been making. She's she knows the um, how good it is to have your own business. Yeah, yeah. And the freedom that comes with it instead of being known. So the dream was never really to go to college, if mm -hmm. I'm being honest with you, ever since like yeah. elementary school, middle school, just Nothing about it really interests me too much. Yeah. Even I'll go visit some friends in college. I'll visit for the weekend. I'd be like, I don't know how you guys would li like live in that. You know what I mean? Yeah, but well, I, I think it's the problem is that it's almost like a veil, right? Mm -hmm. and, and this is like, you know, good knowledge for anybody who's out there trying to become an entrepreneur. Mm -hmm. I feel like the moment that you figure out that like it's a system mm -hmm. to keep you in mm -hmm. line is the moment that you figure out okay, like I can go around this. Yeah. Like I don't have to just do that, right? Like there's, you have to take risk at some point, mm. but you get better at taking risk as mm. you go along. So I feel like, yeah. you know, do what you gotta do to get by. Right. Get into the system to get by, right? Like that's that's how it works, right? You kind of go in, you yeah. churn out, but you, you know, at some point you should have a plan for exit. Right. right? But most people, they go yeah. into that system yeah. and they're just like there. Like yeah. they're like, why am I here? Right, you and know? I think it goes back to what you said. College is a beautiful thing. I actually went to college for two semesters. Mm -hmm. My second semester, I was like, okay. Yeah. I was still doing God's and I was like, but it's time to really lock in on what I want to do. Yeah, exactly. So I, I cut it out. I was like, this is what I'm going to do. I got a job at LA Fitness. I started at front desk first. Gym um, life. Gym <laughs> life, man. Shout out to gyms. But um, got a job at LA Fitness. I started over there, which is grinding, man. Building and just day by day, day by day. Knowing the vision, knowing what would come a year from now. Things like that. It's just knowing and trusting and believing in God yeah. to make that money. College is beautiful. If you want to go to college, you know, for a set career, this is what you want to do. You feel passionate about it, go ahead. But if you're going just kind of to get by, um, yeah. I'll say think about it because it's all, it's also a lot of money. I was paying myself. It's true. I was going to community college over in Northern Virginia. Yeah. And even that was like, it just it wasn't it for me. But yeah, I feel like sometimes it's a tool. Like um, in the way that I see college now that I'm older. Mm -hmm. How old are you? I'm 20. 20? Mm -hmm. Dude, this man says 20, holy shit. <laughs> Yo, that is, that's impressive, bro, because I mean, you're starting so young, and like, Thank you. I remember me at 20, I was like, goofing off. Yeah, <laughs> um, That's impressive, first of all. Thank you, thank you. Um, but, uh, yeah, so I was thinking like, you know, the way that I looked at college is like, you could still even use college as like a pivoting point, right? If, mm -hmm. if it's something that you have to like dedicate your life to, to get inside of, again, you go inside the system yeah. and you take advantage, you know, of something that can you know, pay you out the highest to, you know, give you an investment standpoint and like a, a durability standpoint to, or, or a, what is it? Uh, foundation. A foundation. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, the I can think of the word. <laughs> Yeah. So, so basically, uh, with your brand, mm -hmm. right? So, how did that foundation start? I mean, obviously, you had the thing happen, yeah. but how did, I did you just it? one day wake up and you're like, I'm just going to design this? Like, do you work yeah. with other artists or do you yeah, come up so, with those concepts yourself? So, pretty much, um, it's a very long process. I think about it hard because I'm releasing it for people to to spend, mm -hmm. like how you just did. You just spend your hard earned money, and that's like that's something. You know? Yeah. That's a it's a transfer. So you know, we want to make sure that it's right, the product is right, the design is right. They're going to love it, the feel of it. So it's more than just just pr printing a design on some t-shirts. It has a lot of thought into it. Yeah, exactly. Um, but yeah, it's like, it's pretty much, I work with other artists too as well. Shout out Mike Jones, shout out Shabazz, 
we got this new sweatshirt coming out in season three. But I would like to work with other artists, especially like on a trust level. So people I trust a lot. Yeah. I design myself. But the whole foundation of God said it was built on the accident and then the accident was on January 4th, 2020. Yeah. And January 15th, 2020, that's when God said was founded. That's when I made the first design. That's wild. Yeah, that's the day after my birthday. Really? Yeah. Damn. <laughs> that's a crazy stuff right there. <laughs> yeah, my birthday is January 14th. Uh, wow. Yeah. But it happened right after that. Sorry to take that no, take no. that spotlight away. No, 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 no. But um, no. Yeah, it's January 15th. I had to learn how to rewalk after the accident. Mm -hmm. So the way my house was set up in Virginia, it was like three stories to get up. Mm -hmm. So it's a lot of stairs to get up before you even get to the main area. Yeah. It wasn't it wasn't happening. So I was in the hotel just, you know, getting myself, building myself back up. And then I was sitting there and I was by myself, my parents went to work and stuff. But I was I was doing what I was eating. Mm -hmm. um, and then I looked at my Instagram bio. I saw I had God in it. Yeah, yeah. But this was like, it was. it's not like I put it in after the accident. It was there before. Oh, yeah, yeah, exactly. And I I saw it, and then it was just like, this is it. Yeah, exactly. I got, I, that's where it was born. That's like, it's very surreal because I'm thinking of that moment right now when it just all hit me. Yeah. And I, God sent his God is literally sent from God. Yeah. It, there's no way, there's nobody you can tell me that. You know, God is real. I agree. Yeah. I, mean, I, I agree wholeheartedly. Um, I, I I feel like I've had that. I try to find that calling. Like yeah. you had like that God sent. Like you yeah. just knew. Like you yeah. always like you're like this is it. This is it. And for a while, like I kept trying to like make up a brand name, or, like, yeah. make up something, and I'm like, yeah. honestly, bro, I'm just real Dallas. Like yeah. I'm just Dallas, yeah. bro. Like, I'm just Dallas, and yeah. everybody knows me as Dallas from Dallas. Yeah. I just walk around like. Yeah. You know, and so I was like, how do you brand a name? Yeah. I mean, basically, you choose, you know, something in front yeah, of you. Sure you gotta do something, but, of course. Um, but that's kind of how, I feel like that's kind of how my name came about, but I feel you on that. I feel like, you know, at the end of the day, you have these messages or subliminal messages that you mm -hmm. can kind of like take up on and listen to, but also mm -hmm. like, um, for a while, like, how do you feel about like whenever, you know, you're going through the flow of life, right? Like, right. And, and let's just say you don't give those, like, you know, time to God or, like, time, yeah. to, your, time to your God. Whatever you guys are out there, you know, do your thing. Right. But for me, like, I feel like I constantly have to be in contact sometimes. Right. And, like, I, I notice it whenever I have, like, a day off. Like, yeah. I feel so off. Like, yeah. I feel like it's not there. And even right now, just us talking about it, like, is bringing it out again. And it's, like, right. thankfully, like, I didn't think about it all today until today, mm -hmm. right? And I feel like this is a good reminder. Mm -hmm. Now that I have this, this is like a reminder mm -hmm. for me to like praise God. Yeah, do that daily, you know, like yeah. and do my thing with that. So no, it's that's, definitely um, that's even you not being, you know, yeah. I don't even say it, like saying that message. Yeah. That's what that message comes across as. Yeah, and that's great, and I yeah. feel like that's like good for the world. And yeah. I feel like we need more of that right now. Yeah. To be completely honest, this world yeah. crazy. This world is <laughs> crazy. There's a lot of evil. So it's just trying to be that that light to the people, to the kids. Yeah. Because um, it's just nice to like, because even myself growing up, everybody has like somebody they look up to. So God giving me this vision. Or I went to go speak at my old high school yeah. earlier in March. That's and just like, it was just, it was an awesome moment. I'll never forget it. It's like very heartfelt because I remember being you know, a senior, getting ready to go into the real world. Yeah, exactly. The teachers are throwing things at you. Yeah. Where are you going to school? What are you going to do? What are your plans? Dude. You do not need to know your plans at 18 years old. I thought they were saying You do not need to know what you're doing at 18. Dude. But they force it on you, like, you need to know A, X, Y, and B. And I think that throws kids into, you know, this loop of, you know, student loan debt and everything that's going on. And then um, I feel like it can be very well prevented. But you have to think on your own terms. Yeah. That's kind of like how you said, it's breaking the loop, breaking the system. Yeah. But um, it all depends. I always say this, it's what you do and it's up to you. Mm -hmm. And I believe everything you need and everything you want is right in front of you. Exactly. And I, I had to realize that because I always kept searching for like, the next best yeah. thing. It's like, like, do you ever feel like whenever you were, yeah. you were kind of going through this process, you're like, I need to have the next 
yeah. best thing, you know, yeah. in order, even, even in order to start this, like, I yeah. need to have a better computer, I need yeah, to have yeah, editing yeah. software, all this stuff. Yeah. Like, and a lot of people will say this, like, oh, I can't start to, like, get um, one thing, but you already have one thing that somebody else wants. Yes, exactly. You already have one thing that somebody else is striving against. So, yeah. I think it's how you use your resources, most importantly. Um, but, yeah, man. I, think sure. I watched a video by Andrew Tate, and yeah. um, he basically had this video that he was like, "Your life's not hard. Yeah. Your life's not hard." I mean, and yeah. we really, truly, like as Americans, have it like we've had it pretty good for a long yeah. time. And I think that there's a little bit of like the advantage that we take of like what we have and what we're capable of doing. Because it's like for me, like I have this tripod camera that I invested in like a long time ago, and I didn't know why I invested into it. Right. I just felt like I wanted to do YouTube and like me and my boy Casey have done a podcast with him as well. Shout out to Goka Lifestyle. Shout out, huh? um, but we basically just, rem I remember walking to the gym and it was just like a, a, a message almost. And I was like, yeah. I don't know why I want to do that. But we started talking about it. Like, we yeah. need to do YouTube. Yeah. Like, we need to get our message out there. Like, yeah. There's got to be something that we can do to break this cycle of like living in poverty. You know? like, yeah. That's what it felt like. But I, it never really was poverty. It's just like, it was it's like. Just your Basically, where I put myself. Right, it's your in yeah. interpretation of poverty. Yeah. And um, originally, I'm from Ghana. It's in West Africa. So I see yeah. the way, you know, how blessed I've been to get a shout out my parents because they, they blessed me for even me to get on this point. They set a good foundation for me to run off. They kind of passed me the baton mm -hmm. in a way. But I think me, parents' parents' mindsets yeah. is like the ultimate key. Yeah. It's not like. Um, a handout of anything, but it's just knowing if when you have that foundation, you're blessed. Somebody will love to be where you're at. Absolutely. So it's learning, recognizing that, and then building something of your own, building it from A to Z, from yeah. the ground up. And that's what I'm. That's what I've been doing with Godson for the past two years is building something that you know will hopefully live forever. Yeah, absolutely. And I think that like this is like a great area that you're you're in too because at some point like you're going to be at some point where you it really takes off i i, I can feel it and i can believe in that Thank I, you. and i can see it right like i can just envision that and i don't feel like you know it's not like i put that there it's like yeah. i just feel that and yeah. i feel like at some point it'll be somewhere Thank you. and so i feel like whenever you turn around though mm -hmm. you know this is one thing that i always remember is like no matter where you go no matter how far it takes you like it's always a gift like mm -hmm. I, any, any financial things I have, any mm -hmm. like, you know, watches or whatever, or, right. or shoes or clothes or yeah. literally money in my bank account. It's not mine. Like yeah. I didn't do anything to fucking deserve yeah. this stuff. It's just like, it's just been, it's been a grace of God, like straight up. And I don't know how to explain that, no, I understand. but to just say that like, no, nah, like it is crazy because even the way you said it, me living here is still so surreal. I, I don't, you know what I mean? It feels this place is beautiful. Thank you. <laughs> thank you, thank you. But it's still so surreal. Like I, I was sitting in my room the other day, and I came out in the summer setting, and I just started praising God. Yeah. I should have tear joy. I was just like, Yeah. This is my prayer being answered. Exactly. And it's it's beautiful thing when it comes full circle. Um, I think God He tests you. Mm -hmm. He wants to see if you actually you're gonna break, you're gonna fall. Yes. And I'm. You're gonna continue to get tested. Yep. Anybody watching is gonna continue to get tested. I'm gonna continue to get tested. But as soon as you win, you pass that test, the blessing falls. Take it. Yeah. Take it right there. That's the take it, take it, and write that down yeah, straight like, up. You pass that test, you really believe in it? Yeah. There's a, there's no way it doesn't come. But you have to believe in it yourself. Yeah. So I feel like I like that's kind of been happening a lot lately. It's like I've been like yeah. going through these tests and I I've been kind of catching like, like a mindset and yeah. I think that like if you can not, well, I mean you can teach yourself but I mean like, obviously you know yeah. it comes back to like the whole like you know being in touch yeah. with your spiritual side and like right. having that but like be like reprogramming your thinking is an actual thing like yeah. I didn't think it was possible and then like all of a sudden I'm sitting here like thinking you know, why do I think that dumb thought? Like, why is, right. you know, and if it was with like a girl or something like that, I can just give an example. It's like, I've been so attracted to some like random girls who just like are so bad for me. And I can, right. just, I can just tell they're not in spiritual alignment yeah, right, right, right. with me. And I, it, and it ticks me off. Cause it's like, right. I can sense that, yeah. that presence in the oh, yeah. sometimes. Sure. And I feel like 
there's been times where I've pursued those people to try and like help them, help, help, oh, them. Yeah, save you. them. Well, you know, Captain Save a Ho. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> At some point, <laughs> you know, it's like, you know, it's funny, but it's such a true statement. And like, not That's only true. that though, but also with friends that I've always I've right. tried to force things with. Please. And again, I talked about this in the last podcast. Like, literally, yeah, I, yeah. it's just it, my my podcasts are a continuation of just like life in general. And life right, talks. life in general. Um, but it's just basically like stop forcing, like stop trying to force other people into like yeah. a stronghold arm yeah. and like saving them. It's like they have the ability to do exactly what, what you're, you're doing. doing. And the only thing you can do is just share these like things yeah. with them. Just say, hey, this is how I feel about it. Yeah. You know, and like I, I feel like people can start to sense this vibe about you yeah. whenever you're doing that and yeah. getting it. People kind of like, they will either hate you or they'll yeah. either love you for it. Because they're gonna yeah. see exactly how you operate, right. and, that, and if they're in their own recognizing, you know, their own recognizing ability to see their own glory and their own like blessings, right. then they're gonna love you. If they right. are envious and they're mad that you have what you have or whatever it is, Speaking they facts. feel like so Belittle. like they gotta belittle you or attack right. you. Right. And so it's just like I at this point, I just got to this point where I just like the keto shit. Like yeah. I just. You know, I'm, I take Andrew Tate's fucking Aikido, yeah. copy him, and I'm like defending myself. Like, I put a force field around myself yeah. and walk, like, no, yeah, you know, it's just I think crazy. what you said was very strong. Yeah. I a thousand percent agree with you, even on this journey I've been on, where it's been love turned into hate. Yeah, yeah. With certain people, so many who has my sweatshirt, mm -hmm. five months later, they may hate me. Yeah. And I don't know why. It's not my job to know why, but I know what I'm doing. I know how I move. I know how I operate. Yeah. And I know what I've been blessed with to help others operate in. So I like what you said. Um, but I realized something over the past, this year I realized, because sometimes um, I think hate and love is like the same thing. Yeah. It's just like a mixture of it. So it's how you take it, um, it's how you perceive it, you know? Yeah, I feel, I mean, I'll just go off my feeling here yeah. for this. It's like, you know, whether or not people hate you is, is not really the thing. It's like if they're obsessed with the, you know, like there's like something like they, they buy a shirt or something like that, mm -hmm. right? And then all of a sudden like you're like not obsessed with the quality or something like that. It's like at some point, it's not really always about the quality. At some point, the quality will come, mm -hmm. you know, and and this is good quality, by the way. I love the shirt. Thank you. I'm about it. It feels good. Um, I'm just saying like everybody's got to start somewhere, right? Mm -hmm. And if they like are hating you after they purchase your shirt or something like that, then like, that, do they really understand the message that you're trying to give? Right. And, and, and some people just want it just because it's stylish and that's right. cool. But I I like to find a deeper meaning in like things that I'm wearing now. It's mm -hmm. like I have a ton of gold gym stuff just because yeah. I'm dedicated to the company. It's like I represent that company because right. they they help me through yeah. hard times. Like you know, straight exactly. up, they, that's my that was the the gym that opened its hands to me. Yeah. In terms of like me praying about like getting yeah. in shape, like why do I feel like a you know, fat piece of dookie, you know? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, <laughs> just I really like how you said that. Um, so. And I even say, like, fashion going more into, like, the creative side of things. Mm -hmm. I think the way you dress and everything is is how you feel. Yes. Um, it's an energy transfer, though. Yeah, exactly. So that's, why I, that's why I was like, I need one of these. Yeah. So I, want the, I want an energy transfer, because yeah. like, cause I feel like that's... Now that I'm starting to look at, you know, in terms of, like, what I have as... Mm -hmm. as Again, not mine. It's mm -hmm. like I'm just borrowing to share, like joy. Yeah. Like and so yeah, basically, it, it translates. It does translate. It's a translation. Um, it's beautiful. It's a very beautiful thing. This whole journey has been beautiful. I've just been trusting God through it all. Yeah. And He's leading me through it all. I even say to myself, like, when I come up with these ideas and these concepts, it's not me. It's really God mm -hmm. placing it on me to be the messenger. Like a will. Yeah, so he's walking the line. You know, exactly. I was walking in line with him. Yeah. Um, he brought me here. He'll bring me to the next place and he'll keep bringing me. Absolutely. So Absolutely. I feel that. And what, so, what other plans, you know, I would just say, um, we, again, we can talk about this. You know, it's just yeah. like, I, it's exciting to talk about plans, though, because I feel mm -hmm. like the more you talk about these things, the more that they come into fruition. So, right. what kind of plans do you have to, you know, not only grow the brand, like, where do you want to take it? And, like, what what cities do you want to be in? Like, what city would you love to to say? Hey, like I'm blessed right now, but like, yeah. I want to be here, here, here. Yeah. You know, do you, you right want to be now, worldwide and be international. Yeah. So right now, worldwide. Worldwide. I want to be. The goal of God's is at the end of the day, it's a worldwide brand. Yeah. It's kids, 
in Africa and shout out my cousin Coach Joe, he's actually in Ghana, he has the shorts. Um, yeah. Just things like that, man. It's cool knowing that somebody took a piece of art that we made, we concepted, and it's in a whole other area. Exactly. That I may never step foot in, but it's there. Yeah. And yeah. like you said, it may lead to something else. But the plan for Godson right now, um, we're looking to release, or we are releasing our next collection, season three in April. Um, it's going to be a long season of just a lot of different feelings, a lot of different abstracts, starting with the rug, the rug collection with MetaMats, but it's beautiful. I have designs in there from November 2020. Yeah. Um, this design is actually it that's coming out. Yeah. But oh, so this isn't released yet? Yeah, it's not released Oh, stab! Y'all got this sneak peek, yeah, bro. I've had this since 2020, so it's like, it's cool to sit on it, and I think yeah. the way um, it works, God releases it at, a, at the right time, the right moment. I agree like with I said, that. But, um, yeah. I agree with that. They like, can't force basically what's going out. I mean, right. I, even for me, like, um, I had, you know, a plan to upload every, like, Monday, Tuesday, winter, Monday, Wednesday, Friday, mm -hmm. and then schedules change. Like, my schedules change so fast, like, I can't even keep up with, like, the changes. I'm like, bro, like, I literally, like, found this podcasting thing. Yeah. And like, at first, I was just creating advice videos. I was just like, yeah. I didn't know, like, share advice. And yeah. I still probably will make some videos like that. And, you know, that's fine. But when I did the first podcast, I was like, why am I not just like talking to people? Like, why yeah. am I not like doing No, that? I can I see it in it too. So like, more it is more, I think it's cooler when you're just having a conversation because we we're talking the same way we were talking 20 minutes ago just on camera. Exactly. We were like, so, bro, let's so, say this for the podcast. Yeah. I was like, bro, this is just going to come up again in the podcast. <laughs> <laughs> it's very, <laughs> it's very <laughs> natural. It's very, um, yeah. Because it's, it's, it's true. I not like we're faking the image. Exactly. It's real. It's real. It's real, it's real in my name, bro. It's exactly where it comes back to. It's just because, like, it's, I... It's, it's not a gimmick. It's not an image. It's just, it is what it is. You're going to yeah. like it or you're going to hate it. Right? Yeah. The message is positive. Exactly. I feel like, um, like again, you know, we, me and Terrence yesterday, I got to hook everybody up with, you know, Terrence's yeah. single that is coming out. I mean, I, I heard it. I was like, damn, it's actually really good. Yeah. Um, not, not that it wouldn't be good. It's like it, it blew my mind. Like damn, it's like it's fire. Like I wasn't, I wasn't expecting it to just claim as it was. So, um, so I feel like in general, I have conversations like this with a lot of people, and like even back in Austin, it's like I now want to like expand this back to like that city because Austin gave me almost everything. You know that all the life lessons that have come out of everything. It was because I had deep talks with people at the gym. Like when I work at the front desk, I like to see people coming through and like- I you know, resonate with them. You know, and- I, I resonate with them, man. There was one- That's crazy to say that because I'm, I have people, because I actually worked, my last job was at um, another gym in yeah. Northern Virginia. So I was a sales counselor, but mm -hmm. it's the same thing. Like I, when you said that, I think of these few people in my mind mm -hmm. That I've had these conversations with you'll come and be like, hey, how you it's doing? So real. It's, 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 it's real, man, because these are people who have achieved more than you. Mm -hmm. They've been farther than you. Yeah. So it's only right that you take what they're saying and apply it to your life. Yes. So when somebody sits down, they take time out of their day just to talk to you for 20 minutes mm -hmm. about some life yeah. things, you know it's real. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, so I've, I've yeah. noticed some, though, one. I think I just got triggered by that because I feel like there are great people in there, but there's also been some terrible yeah, people yeah. too. And I think that oh, that's, yeah, yeah. that's yeah. like where I, I guarantee you, you know, it may not be the first time or whatever, but I think that like, you know, we'll go back to, I think God just lets temptation try to find you and you know, it's up to you to either get through that test or not. Again, it's a test, but it's like, yeah. you know, like, uh, yeah. I think, I, I mean, I can't quote, obviously I'm not a big Bible person, I don't know exactly yeah. all the quotations, maybe I should do better studies, but um, I feel like there is something that I read about like how God like lets, you know, the devil or whatever you want to call it, bad yeah. energy, like kind of try to find you oh, yeah. and you have one or two choices. You basically, yeah, you have choices to either continue to pursue that or like mm -hmm. you're around it or you cut it off. And basically yeah. it's at that point, it's like a spiritual war yeah. and it goes on all the way around you. Yeah. And so I feel like I was oh, chosen to like fight, you know, like these mm -hmm. little mini battles. And I'm like, bro, I, don't, I feel like a badass first of all. Yeah. Like, oh, it's cool, but like, yeah. it didn't really come to me until I was like walking around one day yeah. in, in my street. And I was so mad, I was so angry. And I was just like, I can't stand where I'm at right now. I feel so lost. And yeah. So like, like, why am I not progressing? Or what? Yeah. Like, what is it that's got Stop. me so stopped? And it's yeah. like because I was thinking about all the things I didn't have. Mm -hmm. And then not only that, it's like, you know, 
Yo, yo, yo. Part two of this podcast before my camera rudely interrupted my ass. <laughs> Uh, yeah. See, we were talking about, again, I'm just continuing from this, uh, we were talking about testing, and I was like, this is a test. <laughs> this is a test. <laughs> I was like, no, why'd it go off? But, uh, either the memory, I didn't clear the memory beforehand that I thought I did, or I, uh, something about time limits. So, anyhow, uh, we back. So, part two, I don't, what I was trying to say, I, I should have watched the last part of the last. Part one, the <laughs> where we were at, we were throwing nuggets, bro. Yeah, there was yeah. like, we were, we were bouncing around. We were bouncing around. That's okay though, because usually whenever that stuff happens, it means like, hey, maybe this is too much knowledge for people. We should pull back a little bit. <laughs> too much game. We can't throw it all out for you right Million now, or else you're just game. gonna go off and not watch my channel anymore. No, <laughs> Million dollars worth of game. Man. Absolutely. That's, uh, also, dude, I love your I love your space. I love the way you decorate. Honestly, I kind of want to like go over that. I feel like yeah. this space is like creative, like basically. I feel like this is a creative space, and, and it probably helps like unlock a lot of the mm. temperament that got kind of it's kind of piled on, you know. Because mm. I feel like when you have a clear space, and you have a clear vision for things. Like mm. it kind of builds on top of that. So, yeah. how do how do you normally like go about? Cause honestly, if I ever get an apartment, I want you guys to like help me decorate. Uh, yeah, I'm like, bro, I need this, like, I you know, cause, you. cause yeah. I'm like this too. I like, I like minimalism and, yeah. um, you okay. know, just in, just in general though, it's like, I, I look around and I'm like, like, there's a reason and a purpose for exactly how they decorate here. And mm. I just think that that's like badass. I mean, it, it, yeah. it's cool to see, but how do you yeah. go around? Like, how do you, how do you come up with the ideas to, to decorate a your place, mm -hmm. but not only be like your artwork. Like, yeah. how do you choose and feel, you know, that out? Um, it's a beautiful process. Like I said, I think it comes. It's a God-given thing. True. Um, the way we decorated here, especially, like you said, we just kept it very minimalist. Yeah. We don't want like too many things. We got our bed. We got our hamper. It's just, true. Just everything you need. Yeah. Everything else is just extra. Um, I think it kind of declutters in your mind. I like to know where everything is at all times because we're moving. I know you're moving too. Yeah. So it's just like get it and go, get it and go, get it and go. My yeah. wallet's here, my keys are here, my laptop's here, my charger's here. Exactly. You always know where your things are. So when you have too much things, I feel like that kind of weighs you down. Off, weighs it down. Bro. So we just keep it small. Um, yes. I feel, I feel the same that. Thing. But not with like the art and everything. Um, art is like a feeling. And mm -hmm. I always like to say, God sent is my life on clothes. Mm -hmm. Like even this one, it yeah. says, may God give my hair his course I cease to watch me ball. And this was Boom. one of the first designs I did when I was like, after I said in the part one, where I was like, okay, I'm gonna have to make something shape. Mm -hmm. I did two other designs and they were, you know, they were nice, but they were very simple. Yeah. So it was like, okay, you just, it's small, you know what I mean? So I needed That's something okay. that was gonna be like, boom, like, oh, ooh, yeah. wow, let, let me click for them. Well, I think the first initial things are always getting it out of the way. Yeah. It's like you have a vision for something, right? Like, again, I was talking about, like, the quality earlier. It's like it's not all about the quality firsthand. It's like you have to go through the quality of yeah. building that up first yeah. before there's any, like, major yeah. breakthrough, right? Of course. And, you know, whether or not that breakthrough is really fast or whether that breakthrough is really slow. Like, mm -hmm. you know, each to each their own, it depends on what kind of person you are. Mm -hmm. so, you know, I... Um, Shout out to Fresh and Fit Podcast. I feel like I watched them too, and I'm like, they got some wild stuff going on. But yeah, I'm like, yeah. the, the turnaround in which they built up their like quality of podcast, yeah, I guess, yeah, it's yeah. just like insane to me. It's like, they went from like literally zero to heroes, like in like a year. Like, yeah. And that's incredible. Like, yeah. I just can't even, like, I would love the turnaround for that. And like, I'm yeah. trying to press in, and I'm like, I just know these fools are on another level. Like, yeah. Straight, like, straight up. And like I <laughs> said, I've always been saying this recently. There's levels to this life. Mm -hmm. There's levels to there's levels to everything. Literally, mm -hmm. it's just a level. So, what level do you want to play on? Mm -hmm. um, I think that's the beauty of it. Is trying to unlock new levels, kind of like the video game reference a lot of people like to use. Mm -hmm. It's true though. It's very true. It's just like there's levels to lifestyle. There's levels to Food, you know what I mean? There's levels to everything. How, yeah, what quality true. you want? Quality, you want good quality, you want bad quality. Well, I used to eat McDonald's like every day. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I used to eat like McDonald's every day. I get like a McDouble, yeah. and now I'm like, nah, screw that. We're going to Shake Shack, we're getting a little bit better. Yeah. And then that's like, nah, screw that. Like, no, we're going to get like hot diet. No, yeah. no, screw that. We're going to get <laughs> <laughs> exactly. It's just like when you get exposed to um, 
to new levels it makes you want to work a little harder true true i mean and keep that quality consistent it's right. like it's like it's all there for you it's just a matter right. of like how much are you willing to put in the work right. to get that exactly. and, and maintain it right because you know you at the end of the day it. nothing's free bro you, you don't have to work for it and, uh, uh, there was one quote that i, I thought of that was good for this conversation is that basically like i think it was bob proctor uh-huh. i have a video of this on my profile and he was like a big influence for me because it's just like I watched The Secret. Have you ever seen it? I've heard of the book. So basically, I would definitely watch the documentary. It's kind of cool. It kind of just like visualizes it for you. But okay. Bob Proctor was like a really big person in that he was like on it, but he also yeah. promoted it on his like institute basically. But okay, okay. it's almost like uh, he breaks it down for you. It's or that or Earl Nightingale okay. of um, Thinking Grow Rich. I think. Yeah, the yeah. book over there. I was like, I saw it earlier. Again, shout out my mom. She gave me that book in Man. 2013. Yep, dude, your mom knows. My mom, your mom sounds like a cool woman. Yeah, my mom is cool. I love her, man. But yeah. even in the in the book, she wrote a note. I, I'll read it honestly. Give me a yeah, second. yeah, yeah. Grab it. It's and crazy. While, while I'm going over that, but it's um, crazy, man. Basically, it kind of equivalented out to um, this quote that was either by Earl Nightingale or one of the two, Bob Proctor, one of someone. Uh-huh. And it basically stated that like your return that you get out of life is how much energy you actually put into what you do. Mm-hmm. One person could be getting seven twenty five an hour, mm-hmm. you know, or basically two people get could get paid seven twenty five an hour, right? Mm-hmm. But let's just say one of them slacks off, mm-hmm. and you know we're working Waterburger right now. Let's just yeah, say, yeah. Cause I used to, okay, I used to work at Chick Fil A. Okay, so seven twenty five an hour for one person who's working their ass off every right. day, every second like they're refilling, refilling the cups they're getting drinks they're taking orders they're doing whatever right and then one yeah. person could just be like yeah oh my gosh, let me get the let me grab let me get the cups and then like they're going to the bathroom to try to escape and then yeah. like you know all this other stuff and it's like those people equivalently have that seven twenty five an hour but one person legitimately energetically Don't has see. more of that seven twenty five an hour than someone who definitely didn't actually work for that energy. And it's basically, it all correlated to how much energy you put in. Mm-hmm. And I think that that's another cool thing is like, you know, you can you can have all this will and vision, but it's like if you energetically know you should be working harder, and that's why I feel like you should stay humble, is because like if you don't work really hard for what you have, mm-hmm. you're going to get the return of less. Mm-hmm. So do more now while you have the energy mm-hmm. and, and it will pay off in tenfold, right? At some point, you know, like I had this scheduled for Tuesday, mm-hmm. right? I talked to you and I was like, I was like stressing out about Thursday, you know, yeah. trying to make time and, yeah. and coming down and it just energetically, I couldn't do it. But then I was like, you know what? Like I need to, since, since I'm coming here anyway, like something yeah. happened with my paycheck, I had to go figure it out. Yeah. And I was like, I'm gonna be in the area anyway. I need to get this done. Right. And this is important to me. Thanks. So, you know, in, and so at the end of the day, right, I don't want to wait till Tuesday because I'm trying to build hard work yeah. in because like yeah. at some point I'm going to have more clients of course. and I'm putting that in existence, you know, just so you but guys you know, will. we you got, will. we got more coming. We got a big guest next week for yes, sure. Sir. Yes, sir. But in general, right, like the energy of this, like I was so tired yesterday, but at the, something just in, inside of me just said, you can do better. You know, like you can do better. Like don't get yeah. so distracted. Like yeah. you've had fun for a few days. Like, you know, like. Yeah recuperate yourself i gotta go back to the grind tomorrow yeah and so it's all the grind yeah i'll read this real quick yeah yeah read, read this real but this is from thinking grow rich my mom gave this to me in 2013 but it's just kind of weird how not weird but like you said like she kind of knew mm-hmm. she said from your mother you know, my mom's name she said may god bless you with wisdom knowledge and understanding and prosperity and success in all your endeavors love you and i was very young when she gave this to me i remember she gave it to me for my birthday and i was like I'm yeah, gonna get my kid. I'm gonna get my kid the same. Yeah, book. I, mean, I don't care what is happening. It's just like I remember when she gave it to me. I was like, what am, what am I gonna do with this? Like, yeah. I was so young. Like, but look at me now. So that's kind of wild. Yeah. It's like I have a buddy. Shout out Raphael. Um, just we're just shouting out everybody today. Yeah. Nice <laughs> but you just gotta, gotta, gotta shout out the real ones. You know, exactly. Raphael, exactly. you watch this. I love you, bro. Um, mm-hmm. No matter if we haven't seen each other in weeks, anyway. Um, Anyways, his mom gave me a book whenever I was going through. So I had surgery when I was young. So that story of God sent like yeah. makes me feel like so yeah. connected to that. Because yeah. I literally like for a year and a half I was in and out of hospitals. Mm. And anybody who knows me personally knows that it was like a terrible time. Yeah. So it was right when high school ended. I wanted to go to college yeah. and all that stuff was like in my face. Yeah. Exactly. And they it wasn't throw it in your face. If you had the um they definitely throw it in your face, like you said. I'm really glad that you're okay. 
the damn thing with the surgery. Yeah, but well, that's the last when you said that story, I was like, yeah. bro, I feel the same way. Like, yeah. I literally like. And that's the thing. I hit a pinnacle of the the medical trauma. So yeah, and like that's the thing with God. So when I was going through this accident and you know recovering and coming on my feels like. I'm not the only person who's had a God set experience. Exactly. So yes. I looked it up and I was like, has anybody done anything with their traumatic experience? Yes. And I was like, okay, let's flip it. Let's turn it into something that would be beautiful. It's a, it's a light. Um, shout out Kanye West too as well with his thing, Through the Wire. Are you familiar with that? No, I'm not. Uh, wow. I got, I got to be put on, I'm sorry. Yeah, no, right, I'm not, so, not a huge Kanye person, to be completely yeah. honest. Like, but I won't fake it. I'm not going to. Yeah, yeah, everybody yeah. knows who Kanye is. I, I yeah. don't know who Kanye is. Maybe okay. I need to know him. Cause, no, yeah. Like, Kanye is very inspiring to me because um, we have like a similar story. Mm -hmm. He was coming back from like a studio session. And he actually crashed his like car. He was oh. a producer at this time. Yeah. And he um, made a song called Through the Wire. And through the song, his jaw was wired shut. Mm -hmm. But he still. Um, his jaw was wired his shut. His jaw was wired shut. Oh. His jaw was wired shut. And he still was rapping. He was still saying the lyrics. Bro, I need yeah. to, I'm gonna listen to this song. Yeah. First thing we can know this, I'm putting that on. Yeah, I there's, a, that. there's a dope music video that goes along with it too as well. But his story is very God sent in its own. It's very similar. Yeah. Um, that's just more one person I knew with fame and status who had a similar accident. I'm sure there's many more out there, but yeah. that's just the one that kind of resonates with me. And it's just like, okay, this happened to him. You know what I mean? Just I've known him to be religious, I think. Like, obviously, he has uh, the, uh, what is it? Um, um, he's Father. Father Stretch My Hands? Yes, yeah. Father Stretch My Hands. I was like, dude, I know a song by him, yeah. but um, that one was very like, choir based, and I, yeah. it, I resonated with that song very well, and that's why I remember it out of all the ones, because I don't yeah. listen to Kanye yeah, at all. Yeah, 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 yeah. But that one was the one that was just like, dang. Yeah. No, he, he feels has, good, man. <laughs> has very, he has very beautiful art. Um, like I said, one thing I would like to talk about, one thing I'm actually planning on working on soon is speaking more about like mental health. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And men's mental health and everything. Yeah. Um, I think the way, obviously, nobody's perfect in this world. Mm -hmm. We don't know, I don't know how you feel. Yeah. We don't know how I feel. But the thing is to hopefully put it out there and help you know yes because we can yeah. always lie and, you know what i mean you can cover it up with the face and you can yes. just go on day to day so especially thinking men's mental health you know the way he would go out on social media and outlash mm -hmm. and everyone was like yeah he's crazy so, i think more of it like yeah he's he's crazy but wouldn't you be if he got everything you asked for yeah well, it's, it's also that, you know it's I mean? like maybe he needed help in the situation he was dealing with, you know, like, yeah, you know, we exactly. also don't know exactly what he was going exactly. through, nobody was in his living room, exactly. his nobody life. knows how he feels, you know? especially, you know, and this is a big yeah. thing, you know, like, I mean, I know, we talked about like this, like, red pill life thing, like a second ago, I'll just bring it up, because I yeah. feel like there's some knowledge in this, but there's also some toxicity, but, you know, it's mm. like, I think, a lot of the red pills helping like maybe wake up people to the possibilities of issues happening with like relationships and i feel like mm -hmm. as men like it stems a lot from relationships i feel like sometimes you don't know how to handle the relationships but you yeah. also don't know what to expect yeah. and whenever men are like thrown things that they just cannot physically handle at the moment yeah. like i mean eventually i feel like guys are like invincible almost it's like yeah. we are a, a hand down from god like we can just straight up like we're gifted yeah. you know in terms of, of conquering things and yeah. getting over them but it's like some like i've been thrown very heavy objects that like i did not think i could handle so and um i'm actually working on a tattoo i have it saved on my phone but it's actually literally like uh uh it's a philosopher, but it's like a Greek statue, basically, of a man holding a boulder on his shoulders. Like and he's this? just carrying it. Yes! Dude, what the fuck? <laughs> <laughs> Yo, yes! Like, literally, in my phone, like, I have that, and I'm getting it tattooed on me, because it's like... That's dope. You know... That's mad dope. I, I, I'm not going to pull it up, but yeah, yeah, yeah. it's... Because y'all will see it on my arm at some point right here, you guys, I swear. Um, I'm putting that into the world, huh? You talking mess. Yeah. Um, but that's how I feel sometimes. And I feel like men, you know, that's what it feels like. But it's yeah. like you should carry that. Yeah. You become stronger through bearing such weight. And I feel like even this podcast thing, this YouTube, like I don't 
have a lot of money and time, sort of. Mm -hmm. But like I said, fuck it. Like I'm carrying this boulder. I don't care what happens. Uh, you know, it's like those who see me energetically now while doing these videos and mm -hmm. talking to people like you mm -hmm. who feel that they like feel that like they they carry the boulder basically. Mm -hmm. You know, it I, mean, I feel like it energetically raises yeah, you up. Bro. It, it goes like um. It makes I you definitely, I de it definitely resonates with you, but it's like um. Uncle Bam from Spider Man, with great power comes. Or what do you say? With great power comes great respect or something? Great responsibility? Great responsibility, something along those lines. Honestly, it's I have to look that quote, but yeah, I, I, know, I know it's with great, yeah, with great, great power, power comes great respect. responsibility. Yes, yes. I believe so. And it's a very true thing. Yes. Um, I mean, just think about this. Justin Bieber was given like a Lamborghini at like 19. I remember this story on the news. Wow. And he, he was like 19 and he was like got a speeding ticket. And he was all over the news, the tabloids. And it was like, bro, like at 19, do you think that Justin Bieber himself, shout out to Justin Bieber if you watch the podcast at some point, you know, like, do you think that he could handle all that power? Exactly. And that's Kanye. Well, that's 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 you look at it from another perspective, if you really try to put yourself in their shoes, but that's the thing, I feel like a lot of people forget people are human, especially when you get to a celebrity level, yeah. there's no longer sympathy for you. Exactly. Because you're on a level... Well, you're broadcasting yeah. to the world. So it's exactly. basically like you're like a soldier or you're a demon for the mm. most part. It's like yeah, you, I, you're either you're either counterbalancing the world or you're balancing yeah, you're the world. Balancing the world. No, you I, are. I like how you said um, either a soldier or a demon. Mm -hmm. Because I saw something with Mike Tyson, yeah. and it relates back to what we said in part one too, where with God, God loves you just as much as the devil loves you. Yes, it's a war between you guys, mm -hmm. and it's up to you whether you're gonna walk in God's light or you wanna walk in the devil's light. Yeah, but you can definitely go either path. Well, you can. I see it happening all the time. Yeah, and like, it's just like I was consumed by it, but I also think they that both it's blinding. Like it. It's a war. They're pulling on you. It's a tug of war. It, it hurts and it, it feels like that's a, that, that's a big pain to handle. I feel like I, I had a realization that I was like, I remember this one day I was at a festival and like I, you know, I used to do drugs pretty heavily. Mm -hmm. um, I'll be honest, I, was, I think this is the first time I've talked about that basically in, in any podcast I've been in, but I used to do a lot of drugs, I used to go to a lot of music festivals and like mm -hmm. there was times where it just like, just, like, that was like, it just took me. Yeah. It just took me. And I remember getting to this one point where it literally scared me mm -hmm. because I was, you know, and, and praise God for literally getting me out of here. But Amen. I just remember I was doing like ecstasy or something. All right. Part three, rudely interrupted. But basically, I'll edit this together at some point. We were just talking about how to fix this issue. Battery, battery ran out this time. Storage first time. It's okay. Yeah. Whatever. This information is still important. But um, anyhow, out in the world, it's like, that tug of war is, you know, it, it's something that's kind of crazy because at that point where I was talking about the ecstasy and stuff like that, it's like, I remember seeing this girl and she turned around in like a red dress and was just like, you know, you're, you're getting really close to the sun. Mm. And she's like, you're gonna get burned. And I was like, I had no idea what that was, but almost in a way it was like a dark angel, but like a angel nonetheless. And it's like weird because it's That's like good. I've known some people to be angels, but like they're definitely like on some another level yeah. shit. You know, I thought I was tough soldier, but like there's some like you know like next level soldiers in this whole spiritual warfare. You know, and this is the way I think about it. But I could be absolutely crazy, but I'm not. Mm -hmm. um, but yes, yeah, the thing when you're speaking mm -hmm. about spiritual warfare and spiritual things, yeah, um, not everybody sees what you see. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And that's the beauty of it, because sometimes mm -hmm. even when starting God's and I was like, I literally, like, one of the thoughts I had, I was like, oh, man, I hope people don't think I'm crazy. Yeah, well, because it's okay. If I, I'm okay if I'm crazy. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. exactly. That's, okay. that's, that's okay. what I realized later, but like, I realized there's some things I haven't really spoken about, because if I say it, I'm going to sound true. Yeah. It was once, but I know what I've seen, so that's why it's like, exactly. I keep it with me. Yeah, I and I say like that might be a lesson for me is like you know those stories that I have are like personal, yeah. right? And maybe you know it may taper someone the wrong way or whatever the case may be, or maybe it's just the universe literally acting in its own accord. But yeah. Um, yeah, this just this constant spiritual warfare, it's crazy, and I, I definitely think mental health is important, right? We were, this is where we started with all this, so you guys kind of got down into this segment but basically mental health in general like I think that like 
men need to understand that you you can do a lot more than you think you are, but don't think that you're invincible. Mm. You know, uh, there's a song by mm. Michael Bolton. Michael Bolton, shout out. It's like super like 80s song. It's like he's like he's like the guy who's uh, responsible for the song. It's like yeah. how am I supposed to live without, without you? you? Yeah. <laughs> shout out Michael Bolton. <laughs> uh, <laughs> So anyways, uh, he has a song that's called I'm Not Made of Steel. And it's basically like how he's like, he's talking about how much he can carry. He's like, I am a good guy. I can yeah. I can love you and yeah. do all these things. But it's like, you Who's know, I can bend, I can break, I can feel I'm not made of steel. Yeah. You know, and at the end of the day, I was like, damn, that song is like, yeah. resonates hard. It does resonate. Even when you say I'm not made of steel. Mm -hmm. um, this goes back to playing the fact the same way God has blessed me with everything, you can mm -hmm. take it away from him. Exactly. And it's knowing that fact that it's not really yours. Yes. You know what I mean? Everything's a blessing. Dude. Yeah, everything's mm -hmm. a blessing. It's not really mine. It's so, more just to inspire. So to wrap this up, I, I you know, we, we got to wrap this up at some point, you know, we're going to put this together. Yeah. But honestly, man, I just want to know if you have any advice for the person out there watching like right now in this seat. Mm -hmm. You know, he's like, what would you do? I know that Tom Billy does this, or um, I believe it's Tom Billy with uh, Impact Theory. He like asks everybody, he's like, what do you want to leave the audience with? And I love that. Mm -hmm. You know, I try not to copy that, but I I can't it help is. I can't help but to ask. You know, right. as you, what advice would you give the person out there that's like sitting here watching you and like literally gets in this video and is like, damn, like, that was amazing. Like, yeah. what what would you leave them? Um, my advice to whoever's watching. Um, would to be to find your lane and create your own lane because when you're in your own lane, you can go 40 miles per hour, you can go 250 miles per hour, and it's, it's beautiful when you're on, when you're in your own lane. Um, then again, it comes with a lot of responsibility. No one's gonna come save you. It's all what you do at the end of the day. Um, but yeah, that's, that's pretty much it, man. I think I love that. You need to just. Recognize where you're at, enjoy where you're at, but you're not gonna be there forever. So even if you're in a good spot and you're in a bad spot, recognize it's for that, that time, that time being. And you just work hard, man. Just go full steam at your goals because this isn't forever. I agree. You got a time limit, so yeah. just make sure to use your time wisely. You know, I'm, I'm 26 and I'm thinking like, back here, literally talking to him, 20 years old, man, like I just, I'm incredibly impressed with you, and honestly, like I hope that God sent makes it to the fucking moon. Because I just totally believe I believe in it. I believe Thank in branding. You. I believe in this, and this is I think God just put us together yeah, straight up. No, I first, I that's what I'm saying. Like, like, it's just is a thing. The God sent thing. Even moving out here was I was leaving people I love, mm -hmm. man, and it was a risk. But God was like, "Don't worry, I'm gonna put everybody who I need, mm -hmm. or who you know who will help the journey." And Look at us right now. Absolutely, man. So it's, Absolutely. It's God sent to the core. God sent to the core, guys. Yes. Well, um, you have social media. I mean, if the, you have an Instagram, mm -hmm. um, put your shop info. We'll, we'll also put it in the description for you guys, but just so um, Ethan can kind of get it out there and tell you guys where to go follow him, uh, go ahead and Thank you. shout out those social medias. Um, my personal Instagram is at Ethan Larte. That's L A R T E Y. The business Instagram, if you want to give that a follow, is at Shop God sent. And then the website is shopgodsend.com. Sweet. Hell That's yeah. Pretty much it, man. Well, um, guys, if you enjoyed this podcast, like literally, I think this one was like amazing. I, yeah. I Every single one of them has just been great so far, but like this one is just in special in general because like he challenged me to come out in person and do this instead yeah. of just sitting on my computer and like, you know, he, yeah, said, he said, he said, if you're really about it, yeah. bring that camera through. And I was yeah. like, all right, bro, I'm really about it. Let's do it. Like, come yeah. down. <laughs> You know, and you gotta have people around you who challenge you too, and like, yeah. you know, just like take those. I know, take those. I know how it feels, especially when you're doing something like YouTube and everything. You need to constantly be creative and constantly innovating. So yeah. when I saw your channel, I was like, let's do it this way. Let's I'm, see if you'll be down to do it this way. This is fun. I, I, yeah. I, this is like kind of fun too. This yeah. is like this actually helps me like, you know, keep a conversation going. It's yeah. kind of hard online because it's like you know you're just kind of in yeah. there. And then you're like, yeah. Like, okay, like I feel you, and like it kind of turned into like an interview mode. Yeah. But like here, it's just like it's more just real talk, and I yeah. like you know I try not to make it too interview. I try yeah. to just talk about yeah. my experiences, but bounce off. Yeah, and bounce have off each other. Table talk with Dallas, man. 
there you go. Um, so if you guys really, uh, if you like the video, put a comment down below, like it, um, go follow his account, follow my account, I'm Dallas from Dallas on Instagram, um, or Real Dallas in, I don't have a lot of followers on that one, but um, subscribe to the channel guys, watch some other videos, I have some advice on you know different things, I may be uploading some more advice videos, but also I have other podcasts with other great individuals that you guys should watch. And I feel like you'll get a lot of nuggets of information out of this, no matter how long or small that they are. Yeah. Um, in general, like this is gonna be on here forever. Like I want, yeah. I want this to impact people five years from now, six years from now. And like, I hope that, you know, in general, we, we can take this up too. Cause I feel like I'm out here doing work whenever I'm struggling, but I want to do it for you guys. And I want to do it for also my mission in life is to just change people's lives daily and help them realize their true selves and you know just become more aligned with exactly who they are and help men become fucking men again because i feel like this is a spiritual war out here guys like, mm -hmm. like like let's get it together we got this and i feel like i, I just I, like it, I, I love it so love you guys it. have a great day yes, ethan sir. thanks so much bro I appreciate love, you guys man. we'll see you guys in the next one yes sir